This is the last of our four devotionals looking at Joseph and Mary. And yet, you might notice that we haven't actually talked a lot about Joseph thus far. Well, that's going to change today. There's so much more that we could talk about Mary for, but we'll have to leave that for another time because we have to have one class on Joseph. Now, Joseph is a name that is very, very close to my heart. In 2002, when I was in my early 20s, I attended Manitoulin Youth Conference, and you all know about Manitoulin. And the topic of study that year was Joseph. Not this Joseph, but the Joseph from Genesis, the one who was sold by his brothers into Egypt. And it was the most powerful Bible study that I had ever done in my life, and it changed my life. And at that youth conference, at 23 years old, I think I was, I said, if I ever get married, and if I ever have a son, I'm going to name him Joseph. And I was blessed to get married and have a son, and I named him Joseph. And the reason I did that was because I wanted to name my son after a Bible character who was really my Bible hero, someone that I thought had changed my life, somebody that I wanted to be like because he was so faithful no matter where he was. He tried to save his brothers even when they didn't like him. And there's nothing wrong or sinful ever recorded about Joseph. Well, I came to see that there's a couple other interesting Josephs in the life of Jesus Christ. And did you know there's one Joseph at the beginning of Jesus' life? And that was Mary's husband, Joseph. And there's another Joseph at the very end of Jesus' life. And that's a man named Joseph of Arimathea. He was a rich man. And this man is the one who took Jesus when Jesus had died and put him in a tomb and buried him and became his disciple. Now, isn't that really beautiful that God starts the life of Jesus and ends the life of Jesus with someone named Joseph? Because Joseph in the Old Testament had one goal in his life, and that goal was to save his brothers. And you know, that was going to be the job of Jesus Christ, wasn't it? He was going to go out throughout all the land of Israel to his brothers, the Jews, and he was going to try to save them. And a lot of them rejected him, but some were saved. And so it's really beautiful that God has these kind of these bookends at the beginning and the end of Jesus' life of a man named Joseph. And you know, both of these men were incredible, just like the Joseph in the Old Testament. Now, when we first read about Joseph in the New Testament, Jesus' stepfather, this is what we read about him. Matthew chapter 1, verse 18, introduces us to Joseph. And it says this, Matthew 1, verse 18, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When, as his mother Mary was espoused or engaged to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. Now we know that God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, had made that baby in Mary's womb. But Joseph didn't know that. And so he was going to quietly dissolve that marriage. In other words, he was going to say, we are not going to get married. However, before this happened, the angel came to him and told him, don't worry, Joseph, because this child is of the Holy Spirit. And he said that in Matthew 1 verse 20. But while he thought on these things, and isn't that interesting? Because we learned that Mary was the type of person who thought on things, who pondered them and kept them in her mind. Well, these two were both very spiritual in the same way. And while he thought on these, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. 
And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Now, isn't that interesting? Joseph is going to be the one to give Jesus the name Jesus. He's given this very special opportunity. And isn't it neat? Just like we talked about Joseph in the Old Testament saving his brothers, his wicked brothers who sold him into Egypt. Well, the angel tells Joseph, this son is going to save his people from their sins. So there's a lot of Bible echoes and things that are being presented by the angel. And I think Joseph picked up those ideas in his thoughtful mind and said, wow, this son is going to be just like the Old Testament Joseph, just like the person I was named after. Because Joseph would have been named after that Old Testament Joseph, the son of Jacob. Now, hopefully you're not getting your Josephs confused. But either way, this was a very great man. In fact, he has an angel appear to him four times. In Matthew chapter 1, verse 20, the angel says to him, Fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. And then in Matthew chapter 2, verse 13, the angel says to him, Take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt. And that's because King Herod is looking for Jesus to kill him. And then in chapter 2 of Matthew in verse 19, after Herod dies, the angel tells him to return to Israel. And then in chapter 2, verse 22, the angel tells him, don't be afraid of, uh, now that Herod is dead, don't be afraid of the person who took control after Herod. You know what's really neat, boys and girls, is that in all of these times, an angel appeared unto him in a dream. Well, think about Joseph all the way back in Genesis. What is that Joseph famous for? For dreams. Joseph had a dream about his brothers bowing down to him when they were sheaves of wheat. Or he had a dream about the stars bowing down. And he interpreted the dreams of the baker and the butler in prison. And he interpreted the dreams of Pharaoh, of the fat cows and the fat uh, stalks of corn. And so this Joseph in the New Testament also is spoken to in dreams. There's all these neat little connections that if we do our Bible study and keep our ears open for echoes, uh, we can find all these neat little things that prove to us how wonderful and amazing the Bible is. Well, either way, the Bible tells us in Matthew 1 verse 24 that as soon as Joseph got up from sleep, he did as the angel told him. He took unto him his wife and he ended up calling his name Jesus. God really could not have chosen a better man to be Jesus' stepfather, to raise him as his own. And Joseph instilled many wonderful qualities of devotion to Jesus, whether it was when Jesus was working with him in his carpenter shop, because Joseph was a carpenter by trade, whether it was taking them to the synagogue every week, as their custom was, or even up to Jerusalem for the Passover every year. As we read that Jesus and his family, Joseph and Mary, his father and mother, and all his brothers and sisters, went every year up to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. And under the law of Moses, the males, the boys and the fathers and the sons, they were required to go up every year. The women were not required. But Joseph said, I don't want to do just the very least amount that I have to do. I want to do even more. So he took Mary and Jesus and all Jesus' brothers and sisters up every single year to show their devotion to God. And I think there's a great lesson in that, boys and girls, that we don't do just the bare minimum for God. We do as much as we can. And we can show that in how when we are asked to do things by other people, we don't just do the very bare minimum. You know, your parents say, put your shoes on the shoe rack and you kind of kick them over or you slide them on halfway. We do what we're asked and we do more than we're asked. And we might maybe put our other brothers and sisters' shoes on the shoe rack as well. Whatever it is, 
I think the lesson of Joseph, Jesus' father, is not just to do the bare minimum, is to do more. Do as much as you can. Well, we don't really hear much more about Joseph in the Bible. In fact, by the time Jesus turns the water into wine at that great famous miracle, Joseph is not mentioned anymore. And so most people think that he probably died when Jesus was fairly young. And then Jesus would have taken over as the oldest son, kind of as the head of the house. But in that short amount of time where Joseph was with the family and leading them, he instilled in Jesus so many good qualities, and he led his family in a very faithful way. Now, hopefully through these devotions, you've been able to see that when God knew that his son needed to be born of a woman, that he needed to be raised, that he needed to be a man, God did the best that he could and found the perfect family for Jesus. Not that Mary and Joseph were perfect, but he put Jesus in a house raised by a faithful mother who loved his word, who had her mind filled with spiritual things. He provided a stepfather for Jesus who was devoted to being obedient, devoted to knowing God's word and the law, devoted to bringing his family to the synagogue and to the Passover, doing all that could be done so that as God worked with Jesus to raise him, so he had human parents who were doing the same. Hopefully you can see why I love the name Joseph so much. Hopefully you can see why I think Mary is one of the most amazing characters in the Bible. And I very much enjoyed these devotions, and I hope that you have too. And God willing, in a couple months, we'll meet you again, where we go a little bit deeper into thinking about some really intriguing topics like the shepherds who came to visit Jesus at his birth and the wise men who came to bring gifts to Jesus a couple years later. So God be with you throughout the coming year, and I hope to see you soon. Bye-bye.